Hey everybody, my name's Chris and welcome back. We're in the X Rotors AW109 Echo. We're going to take a quick hop around Jacksonville in this aircraft, uh, do a visual VFR departure, and then we'll come back into an ILS arrival into runway 32 at uh, Jacksonville Executive. Um, I already got the batteries going. I want the caution noises to get out of the way before I start recording. Um, but this is a quite easy aircraft uh, to start. So uh, go ahead and turn on the master battery. Turn off the generators, make sure avionics is in the middle, which is ground. Uh, inverters and buses are off, and then we turn on the position and anti-collision lights. Now to start the aircraft, we simply, obviously you always want to check your controls. One, make sure everything is calibrated right, and there's no crazy uh, jerks or anything like that in your controls. Um, so we're going to start with engine one by turning on the fuel pump, turning on fuel cutoff off the fuel, turning on the fuel, and then we're going to put this into idle. What this will do is bring up our N1 up to uh, 18 to 20 percent, and then we will take the little knob up here and pull it forward to the idle position, and this will start engine number one. Uh, screen here does have a start page. Go ahead and select that. Click. Right, everything looks stable. Go ahead and turn on generator number one. Bus time number one. I'll let that charge the battery for a second. going to turn off generator number one and then we're going to do the same thing for number two fuel pump fuel system on turn this to idle let's just get up to about 20 percent on the n1 engine number two and then we're going to crank this knob here and take it to the indent for idle Everything stable out. We'll go ahead and switch this screen back to cruise mode and we'll switch this screen back to normal. All right, now we will turn on generator number one, generator number two, bus ties are on, and inverters are on. At this point, we can turn our avionics to the full on position. And we are set to go. All right. Do a little flight control test. Make sure we got reaction forward, backward, left, right. All right. We got collective forty. All right. Good. Parking brake is on. Nose wheel steering needs to be on. And then gear. Make sure it is down. We'll go ahead and turn the SAS one. SAS two and the uh, auto trim to the on position. We'll leave the attitude hold position off at this time, the taxi. All right, what we're gonna do is slowly pull these levers up to the flight mode. Right into the detent for flight. Let engine number two get up, stabilize. And then we'll do the same thing for engine number one. Do it nice and slow. That will avoid any um, sudden power and uh, jerky movements or yaws motions. All right, let those stabilize. And then we'll go ahead and switch these levers down here to flight mode one at a time. Let us stabilize. And then there we go. 
by doing it that way, it's less jerky for the aircraft um, when you're giving it full uh, flight power. All right, now we are pretty much ready to go. We're going to go ahead and uh, crack and break and uh, off. Nose wheel lock off. We're going to add a little bit of power. little bit of forward cyclic and we'll taxi over here to the ramp put to the taxi interchange and then we'll take off from there while you're taxiing you want to use your pedals left and right to steer the aircraft and then a little bit of left and right on the cyclic to uh, keep it from tilting uh, tipping and having a rotor strike would be bad We're coming up on where we're going to take off from is this interchange. So we'll let off, collect, and add a little brake. Go ahead and bring the vehicle to a stop. All right. So we're going to take off. Uh, where is the wind stop? Under there, I think. Yeah, but it looks like the winds are pretty calm. So go ahead and take off. And we're going to fly out and come back around and do an arrival on ILS runway 32. So once we're in the air, we'll get all that set up for you. Alright, for takeoff, we're going to turn our attitude hold switch on. Everything else down here is on and good. Everything's in flight mode. We're going to go ahead and lock our nose wheel steering. Then we're going to gently add some power and pull a little bit uh, back on the cyclic. And while we're doing that, we're going to hold down the F key release button, whichever you set that for. Um, F key release, I set it for my trigger. So what that will do, it will release the attitude hold and give me full authority of the aircraft. So this is with it released or on, or uh, I have the button pressed and when I turn it off, I have no authority of the aircraft. So I'm going to go ahead and hold it. We're going to do a takeoff here. Get up in the air. Rotate and clear our area. Alright, everything's clear. Let's go ahead and uh, take off. Little forward pitch. Forty knots, go ahead and raise the landing gear. Now, I have released the FT release button. I am no longer holding the cyclic. The helicopter is doing its finest to hold its position where it's at. The only thing I have control over is the uh, pedals. So now what I want to do is we're going to set the uh, heading to a northerly direction here. We'll say a three, three six zero. If you press the center of it, it will sync your heading to your current heading. Um, but let's go with three six zero on the heading. We're going to go ahead and set our uh, vertical speed to match five hundred feet per minute. We'll go ahead and set our vertical speed and our heading. Now autopilot will be flying the aircraft. Now on the cyclic, there's some buttons or uh, some key bindings you want to set. I set them to my hat switch. Um, 
Um, I'm in VR, so I don't need those for viewing or anything, but that's what I have it set to. So on my hat switch, I have up, down, left, and right. And what that does, it's in the uh, controls, it's called cyclic hat up, or U, E, L, and R. So you set those up as you want. And what that does is it controls this little, little uh, hat switch here on the cyclic which while we're on autopilot, we're on vertical speed hold, up and down will control our vertical speed. Left and right will control our heading. Uh, one click at a time, all right? That's what those are for. If I did not have the vertical speed on, but I had the indicated airspeed on, it would control my speed. So if I hit indicated airspeed and I Put the switch up and down, it will control how fast I want the helicopter to go as well as my vertical speed. Back to vertical speed. We'll go ahead and level off at 1500 feet. So we'll bring our vertical speed down a little bit. Once I get to 1500 feet, we'll go ahead and hit the altitude button and now I'll hold that altitude in this aircraft. ahead and hit the altitude button so it'll hold 1500 feet and I'm going to change my heading to a heading of zero nine or zero okay the airport over there we're just gonna fly around it here um, my ILS information is already set in my uh, nav, so 111.7, the course is going to be 321, it's already set. You can use GPS, uh, you can function by hitting the CDI button, we'll switch it from the radio navigation to GPS navigation, and you just hit the nav button and it will follow your GPS course. All right, so let me show you something real quick. I'm gonna go ahead and turn off the autopilot and just have the attitude hold on. So we'll hit the cyclic reset button. Now attitude hold is on, so what I can do is if I press the F key release key, I have control of the aircraft. So I am now flying the aircraft. And right, up and down, I have control of the aircraft, okay? All right, so what we're going to do is we're going to set back up the level flight. I'm going to release the key once I'm stable. All right, there's good. All right, so now I don't have the autopilot switches are in standby mode. So now the up and down on the uh, cyclic hat switch will control my up and down trim. Okay. I can make minor adjustments with my trim feet. All right, and then the right and left will control uh, roll. I'm holding it down and it's gonna roll some more. Maybe trim my pitch down a little bit and now it's just gonna hold this attitude. If I press the left side is going to bring it back and let's click it and center it here there we go maybe trim up a little bit now that we're level that adjustment so that's how we're flying the helicopter now is with the trim keys so those have multiple functions depending on the setting of your system so there's your port uh where did you go oh there it is right in front of me all right what we're going to do is I'm going to sync my heading by pressing this middle button here. And then I'm going to hit the altitude hold and I'm going to hit the heading hold. And then um, what we're going to do is we're going to turn to a heading of, let's say, 120. All right. And what that would do is we're going to come out here and then we're going to intercept ILS for runway 32. And I'll show you how we do that. So let me get out here and get turned around. And once I come up on the intercept 
um, I will show you what, what, how that works in this particular helicopter. All right, guys, we're now at a heading of uh, 231, which is going to be the base leg for runway uh, 32, and we're going to intercept the ILS. So, like I said, it's already programmed in the frequency 111.7. The course is 321. So now what we're going to do is click the VOR approach button. And what that will do is that will set up the ILS, the nav, and the VOR approach all to arm. And on the HSI, HSI display, you'll see a little runway symbol that will show the lineup for the runway. All right. And then here is your glide slope. All right. So those symbols will pop up. And then the VAPP will pop up. Now we want to turn to a heading to intercept at a lesser angle than about 15 degrees we'll turn to a heading of uh a two nine or one and we'll kind of intercept and uh, once it intercepts the helicopter will automatically capture capture and hold that ils we'll go ahead and anticipate the descent so we'll go ahead and bring down the collective a little bit that way we don't see okay there we go we got the approach is in the capture so it's going to turn a heading and intercept that uh, ILS vocalizer and then once the glide slope has captured the ILS button will turn it green as well We're at 1500 feet at this point on the glide slope we should be at about 1900 feet so we are a little on the low side which is better than being too high It'll take a minute for that ILS uh, glide slope to uh, come down and meet us, but we'll stay at 1,500 feet until it does. All right, you can see the glide slope on the HSI coming down to meet us. So once it turns green, the helicopter will start descending on its own and the ILS will turn green or turn to captured as well. There he goes. Alright, there you go. We are on the glide slope. We want to maintain about 100 knots for a bit here. Don't want to get too crazy on the speed. Depending on where you're going to land on the runway, if you're actually going to land on the runway, um, obviously it will depend on your approach speed. We're going to shoot for the numbers, so we're going to stay about 100 knots until we get a little closer. And right now the helicopter is flying the uh, ILS on its own. At this point, uh, depending on your weather situation and visibility, at this point, if you can see the runway, I would want to take control. So what I would do is hit the cyclic reset button. I will turn off the uh, autopilot and then I will hold down the FT release button and fly the helicopter in completely on its own. So I will have control of the helicopter the rest of the way down. I'm just flying it and just setting where I want it and releasing that button and it will hold it. Where I want it. Um, that way I'm not completely holding it the whole entire time. Alright, below 100 knots we'll go ahead and bring the landing gear down. Make sure your nose wheel is locked. A little bit of rudder to get this thing going straight. We're 
going to aim for the numbers, hover, and then uh, do a hover taxi over to the ramp. time I have the FT release button pressed on the joystick, so I have full control of the uh, helicopter. Now if it's a nice calm day, um, you could almost taxi or hover uh, just using the beep trims with the uh, release, uh, FT release uh, the, uh, unpressed. Uh, it's, it's stable enough to hold the aircraft like that, so it's pretty nice. But for now we're just going to hover taxi over here to the ramp. Obviously, hover taxi, air taxi, and ground taxi all depend on the airport, the area, your, your, the area and location you're in. Obviously, in the U.S., uh, you can hover taxi and uh, air taxi as you wish. I know in some other countries, uh, they like you completely on the ground taxi. That's why most helicopters built in, say, Russia have wheels on them. Most helicopters, say in the Western uh, world, uh, Europe uh, and the US, all have uh, skids for the most part. Go ahead and we'll put it down right here. Okay. I still have the release button pressed, so we'll go ahead and set it down. We'll go ahead and push the brakes. I'm going to hit the cyclic reset button. That will trim everything out. And then we go ahead and turn off the attitude hold. And then you go ahead and taxi to your parking spot if you didn't land where you wanted to land or but we'll go ahead and we're going to put this helicopter into a high hole. Grab those first and then switch these to out of position. We'll go ahead and set our brake as well. I want to thank you guys for watching this video. I hope it explained how to start the aircraft, how the SAS system, the autopilot, and the attitude hold system all work along with the beat trims and the FT release button and the like. If you have any questions, uh, feel free to ask. I'll be glad to help you out. You guys have a wonderful uh, morning, afternoon, or evening, whenever you happen to be watching this. See ya.